Hey guys, welcome back to the stream. Uh, thank you for joining me. This is a malfunction from New Zealand. Beautiful um, day out there. It's a bit downcast. Heat is on because it's a bit cold. It's, I think we're autumn going into winter, and um, a lot of big news coming out of Hollywood today. Uh, first up is Disney. Disney, a uh, bit of an issue there with Disney. Um, Abigail Disney, the uh, heir uh, to the Disney. Um, Conglomerate, um, worldwide, internationally known, um, you know, everybody knows who Disney is, right? So there was a big um, thing happened, as you know, this with the bear bug. And so there have been a lot of cutbacks on um, with Disney. They've been putting people on, uh, laying off 100,000 uh, 100, people on furlough, which means they're low pay or un unemployed or, you know, layoffs and such so abigail disney this is coming from deadline and abigail disney posted a 25 thread tweet ripping the walt disney company's plan to furlough 100,000 workers mostly in a theme park division in a move she says is about preserving executive bonuses uh and shareholder dividends and not about the workers people who actually keep the company you know moving along and doing all the hard work um, so she goes, what the actual F she wondered in one of her initial uh, tweets, kicking off the thread, which is pinned to the top of her account, alluding to the estimate, uh, to the estimate of an, of the shareholder dividend from a recent financial article, Disney wrote that $1.5 billion would be, uh, would go to pay for three months salary to frontline workers. And it's going, going to pay going to people who have already been collecting irregular, 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 just, you got, oh, I hate it when I can't pronounce words, tongue tied here, who've been collecting for bonus for years, like millions and millions of golden handshakes for years. Describe the idea of paying bonuses during the pandemic as the real outrage. Abigail Disney, the granddaughter of Roy O. Disney, who co-founded the company with his younger brother, Walt, a documentary maker, philanthropist, and activist. She has been a frequent critic of executive compensation and treatment of employees at the company. Uh, I've, I've been watching this company for a while, and yes, they're really, really bad. And I, I, I always go, well, why do people keep supporting Disney so much? It's, well, they like the intellectual property. They like the mouse. And they like the movies, but they don't really know about what happens to the workers. And so, a hundred thousand workers being put off work uh, might, and uh, probably not paid it. You know, going to have to take pay cuts. But the people at the top and the shareholders, ah, don't worry about them. They get bonuses. So she goes. I've been holding my tongue on the theory that a pandemic is no time to be calling people out on anything other than failing us in a public health sense. Disney tweeted, I thought it might be a moment for peace and reconciliation, but I feel a thread coming on. She has been, uh, Disney has been disproportionately ravaged by the virus, which has shut down its theme parks, as I mentioned earlier, hotels and cruise ships. No live sports are being played, which hit ESPN, which is part of the Disney family, and ABC during a season when they would ordinarily be re um, reaping big ratings from the NBA playoffs and, and movie going people, you know, buying tickets to all those movies, ground to a halt. The amount and timing of Disney's next semi annual dividend will be determined by the board and announced in June. The Executive Compensation Committee determines that the bonus structure for top executives. Many for top executives, many of Disney's tweets reprised her past criticism of the gap between top management take take homes versus the salaries of low level employees. So the guy at the top who's just signing off checks gets, a, you know, gets a bonus of a million dollars, a couple million. And the guy, you know, the young lady putting on a dress, being in the hot sun all day, being a Disney princess is her dream. I don't know why people do that all day long and getting a uh, minimum wage right uh and so she goes um disney executive agreed to salary deductions including a 
a uh, complete deferral by IGA. Even so, his total compensation package will be still be 900 times that of the medium wage. 900 times that of the medium wage earner. The old person, the everyday, you know, hand to mouth person, pay, uh, um, you know, pay packet person, uh, living of the check every week, probably takes home maybe. Uh, 40, 50 grand a year, you know, oh, I get takes up 900 times that. How is that actually real? And, you know, celebrities, okay, celebrities, right, and living in their mansions, having a bath in rose water, singing with a piano on the side, saying, oh, we're all in this together, guys. And then that medium men are there living paycheck to paychecks going, Oh, look at them. They're just like us. They're worried about toilet paper. No, they're not. They've got their private doctors on the call. They'll ship it in with a helicopter. Anything happens, they're fine. They don't have to worry about, you know, they've got millions in the bank. They don't worry about losing their job. They're not like us. All right? Get over it if you think celebrities are anything like us. All right? And they, they're not, even in their head, they're not like us. They're mental, mentally unstable when they come out and do stuff like that. All right, so the road ahead, the road ahead for the company will be difficult, Disney, uh, well, um, Abigail Disney acknowledges. Disney faces a rough couple of years, to be sure, she tweeted. The challenge are uh, existential, but existential even. That does not constitute permission to continue pillaging and rampaging by management. Those are harsh, harsh words. That's like an invasion. It's like it's like friggin' Vikings coming into England and just decimating and taking away all the gold. And, and you, if you remember Viking season one, when they basically went into the uh, monastery and killed everybody, all right, pillaged the, and took away all the riches, their their religious relics, took away the people, all right. I don't um this. She, um, does it close with a direct appeal to management? I don't have a role at the company, which is fine with me. She wrote, I'm just a citizen who cares, and I think that makes me free to say what I believe, and good on her. But I am in her hair, right? Her name is there, right? Um, and I do carry this name with me everywhere. So when people look at that name, they go equate her to with Disney because it's her lineage, right? Um, and I have a... And I have a con conscience which makes it very difficult for me to sit by when I see abuses taking place with that name attached to it. This isn't all that hard. This isn't all that complicated. Just give up some of your already ample compensation, that 900 times, uh, especially this year. Give up, God forbid, two or three basis points on the annual return. Analysts will shout and scream and have little ten temper tantrums. Who cares? You are bigger than they are. Of course, you're richer than they are. And as the biggest, most exceptional, most iconic guy in town, you could choose to lead. If you do, who knows? You would follow, who would follow you? We have a moment here. A crisis is always an opportunity for change. A Disney spokesperson did not immediately return deadlines, requests, or comment. Of course, when you have someone like Abigail Disney calling you out, on social media saying you guys need to stop pillaging right and stop r taking away food from the from the disney princesses from the person who's uh, who's selling uh, sausage rolls or whatever you guys sell over there in america tacos and all that right so what else does this say either either show up or get lost you know just prove to the world that you are actually leaders and this is what she's saying prove that people can look up and say we believe in this call you know and in, in disney again but i tell you what nobody's if people if you're smart you're not believing in disney to do the right thing because these guys don't give a hoot about you know about where or what you're doing all they care is you go to the shows you go to the on their cruise lines you go to the hotels you pay that money exorbitant as it is you go to the movies and you go home when and then 
maybe you decide to buy the merchandise. They don't really care how you live, whether you're poor, whether you're rich, whether you can afford that um, blue milkshake. Doesn't matter, right? Look at um, look at what happened with um, with Star Wars, the alternate universe, as I like to call it. Not the real thing, just a copy of it. All right. So if this is how they treat what you like, right? So they don't really care about what is the right thing to do. They care about how much money to make to give to themselves, not to their workers, but to themselves. So there is that. Now, one of the two con um, company, uh, countries in the world, uh, Poland and Denmark, they've decided that they're not going to um, ba um, bail out companies that have been hiding their money offshore in tax havens. That's a good lead to take as a country, isn't it? So if, you know, if you've got somebody like Apple who's hiding their money over in, over in um, Ireland somewhere, right? Uh, so that people back in America, uh, they don't pay as much tax because, hey, we're located over there. We're not an American company, even though you make all your money from American consumers, right? Majority of it. But you don't, and you, all your workers are, in, you know, mostly in there. But, hey, you know, we need to, you know, we, we don't, we have somewhere else, so we're going to put all our taxes elsewhere so we don't have to pay taxes. And I'm against people not paying taxes because guess what? You need the roads built. Uh, you know, you got to have safe, you got to have the schools and stuff. Uh, you got to have your health, especially now, you know, all that stuff. So all that, you know, goes into it. So I never complain about taxes paying. I mean, I remember paying twice as many taxes because I was, I was studying and working two, different, two jobs trying to make bank. All right. Next up uh, is uh, another one here. We've got Warner Media. Now, if you, um, if you remember, I've been talking about, um, Marvel this week, and so at the moment, let me just grab the right one here. Here we go. Uh, I think it's this one here. Fox News uh, talks about. Um, oh, that's the, that. I'm coming to that one soon. All right. So this is uh, from Variety Online. Post-pandemic Hollywood inside plans to make movie and TV sets safe again. So what are they going to do? Bit of a segue here from the Warner one. Tom Cruise expected to spend his summer in Italy hanging on to sides of planes, dodging bullets, and engaging in elaborate car chases. But the arrival of the bear bugs spoiled those plans, indefinitely postponing the shooting of Mission Impossible 7. The latest installment of the globetrotting franchise is on hold. With signs that, this, um, that the virus is starting to plateau, Cruise is hoping that big budget action film delayed since early March, we'll see cameras roll this June. However, I don't see that happening. I think even here in New Zealand, uh, we are not going to be moving a lot in groups for a while. Uh, so how are they going to, how are they going to start um, making films when like I was just on, on online with a friend just talking about, um, you know, our, our industry, our industry here in New Zealand, uh, our film industry. See, we rely a lot on tourism. So our tourism board's going to be hit. Our filmmaking industry is going to be hit because we, and, you know, even soaps like, um, you know, uh, what is it? Shortland shoot, stuff like that, you know, and even, uh, you know, other shows and stuff, reality shows, all that's going to be hit. So our entertainment industry and our tourism industry is going to be hit big. Uh, so there's nothing you know, people are looking at the safety side of things and it's not going to be anything happening until next year as far as I can foresee. Because, look, planes are not going to be flying. Uh, I heard recently one of my uh, family members, uh, relations, actually got it on the plane going to Fiji. It's in isolation right now, right? Another one got it at a, uh, at a, at the, at a school in Auckland just by going to a friggin' uh, a concert or something, a gathering. So at the end of the day, people are very conscientious about this. It's like, okay, we're gonna, are we gonna fly uh, hundreds of miles to get to New Zealand? And how are we gonna make sure that we're actually making films from this, you know, from a distance, uh, making sure that actors w which have to stand next to each other, how are we gonna do all this? Are we gonna like sit, stand over here and you're gonna stand over here, we're gonna have two camera shots, the costs involved in this horrendous. So especially when you want to come over to New Zealand, get your tax breaks uh, so that we actually um, 
you know, help our own industry grow, continue to grow. We're all going to be hit. So as I was saying earlier on the other um, stream about the animation industry, you don't um, you don't have to worry about that so much because you can just send it uh, as long as the internet's good, as your providers doing their job. You can basically back and forth across the internet and say, hey, this change, this change, that. If you're long as using the same um, software, of course, if you are working on a project, you should be using the soft, same software so that you can you don't have to you know waste time on having uh, convert and stuff. So I don't, yeah. So for I don't I don't see anything um, happening for us this year in New Zealand, and I don't see it happening for international community as well, uh, because everybody's going to be concerned about that. Now, the next thing is, um, let me guess, um, grab this here. Now, HBO Max uh, launched. Um, it's going to be launched in a month, right? As I mentioned yesterday, they're going to have trouble as well because all these productions um, that they were going to have, the money that they were going to get, as much as all these productions for the last start of the year, right? Like we're just saying about Tom Cruise not being able to make it since the, uh, March. Um, most of these productions are like eight, six to eight months long. Right. If you're working on a TV show, you are basically you might be in there for a whole year, depending on how many episodes. Most of the bigger ones are around about 24 um, episodes, um, or else some of the shorter ones, like again, go up to about three seasons, or uh, three episodes, and you got to plan all that out. So at the end of at, at the end of the day, this is all going to be a hit. Now, with all that being said, HBO Max isn't a better place than Disney than Marvel because of the fact that they have all this um, extra stuff. Yesterday, I, um, they released a um, Looney Tunes um, teaser, a trailer teaser, you know, what's up, Doc? And um, so they have, oh, I forgot to mention, they have Studio Ghibli, Ghibli, right? Ghibli from um, Japan, all right? All that amazing, beautiful um, shows that uh, movies that they have that Netflix was buying to get, and they'd been saying, "Yeah, we're in con." You know, we're talking, we're talking with them about it. Yeah, we're going to get it on. They lost that. They got Cartoon Network, right? And South Park. They've got South Park. Oh, and the other thing, TSN. I didn't realize until I watched um, um, America. No, Fem American Dad. I didn't realize American Dad is part of the Warner Media now. Remember, there were Fox, and Fox got bought. Of uh, uh, 20th Century Fox got bought out by Disney, but American Dad didn't go with them, even though they were part of Fox, and so didn't um, Family Guy. If I'm right, because it's both done by uh, Fox. Uh, sorry, by um, uh, Seth MacFarlane's company, right? And also possibly the Orville. Right, it would be going there as well, and now Seth's got all this, uh, all this, um, um, you know, seasons and like 14, 15 seasons of Family Guy and American Dad, which American Dad came in later. Uh, also, Cleveland and stuff that's all going to go over to there, over to Warner's and on HBO Max. So, yeah, I think, um, as much as there's struggle that's going to be for Warner's, uh, in this new uh, environment, uh, financially, they have enough. They're already to actually come in and make a big jump. Uh, the other thing was Marvel. Marvel had to. Um, there was going to be shows by the, by, I think by the showrunner of Punisher for Marvel. That's a, a new show called Hellstrom, which is the son of Silent Satan, right? So they were going to bring in a um, a feet. Um, they couldn't just have a boy, a, a male character as a lead. They had to, they gave him a sister as well. So, and that's pan. So that's not happening either. And it's going to happen for a few shows. And the way, uh, like, if you look at, um, uh, I can't remember her name, Swats, over at, um, who was the showrunner for She Hulk when all this, you know, during this year, this past year, she was getting all this racism about white men and all this stuff. And, um, you know, as if like the only uh, white men in the world are like friggin' American white men, males, uh, not worried about all the Europeans, all, all our Europeans here in New Zealand, not worried about all the people in Australia and all that. Yeah, but every white man is bad, according to her. And so this is the showrunner for Marvel's 
you know, Marvel Studios, um, She-Hulk. So she went out and started taking South Park and all that, all that background. But what I'm leading to is this: I would basically cancel that show as well, She-Hulk, because already she's turned off 50% of her um, audience. So what's the point of going into work in that? But they probably won't because it's a female show. Cheers, um, cheers, man. Catch you later, bro. Thanks for watching. And so, um, so what? Why? You know. Any of these like really weirdy people run shows, forget it, right? Forget, forget it. And this is what's going to happen. They're going to basically get the paper and this. They're going to get a pen and go, right? So, um, yeah, uh, I think we should cut that show. Uh, what's our best shows? What's actually got a good following? Oh, Mandalorian. Yeah, let's give it about three more seasons, four more seasons. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, what about that that person with the She-Hulk thing? Oh no, she's been like doing all this weird stuff on uh, on social media and people are like not liking it and stuff yeah we'll cut that same thing will happen with uh with um with the old comics right and like i said i'm watching comics i'm watching this and this is where disney's got like dc's gonna it's gonna have their neck on the chopping block all right and the boot's gonna come down hard and they already started pencils down and all this stuff but hey that's enough of me um hope you um yeah hope you're well wherever you are and enjoy yourself uh, you know keep safe um uh, hope you're you know doing well with your family and hopefully you don't have to worry about toilet paper wherever you are and please be safe uh be kind you know treat each everyone like you like them to treat you catch you next time